1E e is the last co-requisite topic before we do section 1.1 in college algebra. And the first thing is what we're going to do is we're going to identify solutions to equations. So before we even solve them, we're going to remind ourselves how do we check. And so the first thing I want to point out, um, an equation contains an equal sign while an expression does not. So the stuff that you might see, so for example, 3x plus 2 equals 6 is an equation because there's an equal sign there. There's two different sides, right? But if I just have 3x plus 2, that's called an expression. There's nothing we can really do with it. We could maybe potentially combine like terms, um, but there's none to combine. All right, so on example one, before we, they have us jump in solving equations, they just want us to make sure that we can evaluate them. This one's not so hard, but on, I think, the worksheet and maybe even on my math lab, we had to do it with fractions, so I'm just making sure we feel comfortable putting fractions into our calculator and so forth. But the whole idea of a solution of an equation is that when you plug it in for the unknown, it will make both sides of the equation equal each other, right? So we want to plug this in for our x. So we're going to have negative 4, and then what operation is this when they're right next to each other? Multiplication. Multiplication. So we're just going to have negative 4 times negative 2 minus 3. Does that equal 5? Question mark. So I always put a question mark there because when they ask us to check to see, we don't know necessarily if that's true or not. So negative 4 times negative 2 is 8. 8 minus 3 is 5. Is that true? Yes. It sure is. 5 equals 5. So on my math lab, you would choose the option, yes, this was a solution. If you did that and the left did not equal the right, then you would choose no. All right, so real quickly, how do we solve equations, guys? There's two properties. Really, there's an addition and subtraction, but since they're opposites, they're kind of the same thing. The addition property just says if you have an equation and you add something to one side, as long as you add it to the right, it's still the same thing. And same thing with subtraction. If you have an equation and you subtract something from one side, as long as you do it to the left, it's the same thing. I always think of it as a scale. Like if you have a scale and it's balanced and then you add five pounds, as long as you add five pounds to this, it's going to go back to being balanced. All right? So these are really, really basic equations. So always just do the opposite. So if we want to get y by itself, what are we going to do to both sides? Plus six, right? So it's opposite. So like there's already a negative six there. So you say, okay, how do I get rid of a negative six? Well, let's just add six to it. But if you add six to the left, you just gotta make sure you add six to the right. All right? Did we do anything with y? No. So who's still there? Y. But what's negative six plus six? Zero. And you can put zero there, but we don't want to clutter it up if we don't have to. And then what's negative two plus six? Four, right? And what's nice, and I use the word nice when you guys probably want to use the word nice, but what's nice about it is you can always check equations, meaning you can do exactly what we did up there in example one. We can plug back four in. Is four minus six negative two? Yes. So we have the correct solution. On three, it's really no different, except for we want to get z by itself now. And how is eight added to it? Well, I just said it. How is eight on, combined with z? It's added. So what's the opposite of adding? Subtracting. So we're just going to subtract 8, but if we do it to the right, we just make sure we do it to the left. Okay? On the left, what's negative 2 take away 8? Negative, negative 10. You're sitting at more negatives, right? Equals, we didn't touch z, so z is still there. And then what's 8 minus 8? Nothing. So some of you might like to flip it around because you just don't like that variable on that side. That's fine. So negative 10 equals z, or z equals negative 10. And again, you can che uh, check it by plugging it in. What's negative 10 plus 8? Negative 2. So you have the correct solution. Here, this is kind of a weird one. Notice x is already isolated. What's the only thing we have to do to this problem to solve for x? Just do all that math, right? We don't have to do any opposite stuff. As long as everything's on the same side and you're not moving from one side to the other, you do the math that's there. And we have a calculator. So just throw negative 2 plus 90 plus negative 100 in your calculator, and you'll know what x is. What do you guys get? Negative 12. Negative 12. So kind of keep that in mind, because I feel like that's one place where you understand it as we go over it, but sometimes when you have a mix of things, we get a little confused. Whenever you're combining like terms on the same side, do the notation. Do the subtraction and addition that it says. 
It's only when you're moving from one side to the other that you have to do that opposite notation. So then if we know how to multiply, or excuse me, um, add or subtract, multiplication is kind of the same idea, okay? So if we have two things that are equal, multiplying by one side, and as long as you do on the other, keeps them equal. Same thing with division. So you're just always doing the opposite operation. So let's look at 3y equals negative 18. So we want to know what, when you multiply it by 3, gets you negative 18? 6. Not 6, but... Negative six, yeah. So what we're going to do is, this is uh, multiplication, so to undo multiplication, you divide. But if you do it to the left, you do it to the right. What is 3 over 3 reduced to? 1. So he kind of just makes it a y there, correct? And then negative divided by a positive is a negative 6. And again, if you wanted to check it, you could say, what's 3 times negative 6? Oh, that's negative 18. So you can always check it by plugging it back in like we did on the very first example. Um, this is basically the same idea, just kind of flopping where things are. If you wanted to get x by itself, what do we need to do to both sides, guys? Divide by 8, perfect. Okay, so we're going to have, what is that, negative 4 equals x, or x equals negative 4. And again, a lot of times we don't think of it that way, but we're solving for the unknown. Like, what do you multiply 8 by to get to negative 32? Negative 4. And then 7 and 8, I feel like the division stuff doesn't show up as often <coughs> as that multiplication, but it's the same concept. How did you get rid of multiplication? You did its opposite dividing. Well, how do you get rid of division? You do its opposite, you multiply, multiply okay? So we want to get y by itself. So we're just going to multiply both sides by 5. Why does it work over here? Because technically this is 5 over 5 again, which reduces to 1 and leaves you with y. And then over here, throw 16 times 5 in your calculator. Is that 80? Is that right? Yeah. And again, you can check it. What is 80 divided by 5? 16. So you can just plug it back into that original. Last but not least, this is division. So how do you get rid of division? You multiply. On the left-hand side, negative 4 over negative 4 reduces to 1. So we have x. And 4 times negative 4 is negative 28. And if you want to check, what is negative 28 divided by a negative 4? The negatives cancel out, and 28 divided by 4 is 7.